First up, the college admissions scandal. Three months ago, we found out that dozens of parents were paying millions of dollars to cheat their kids' way into college. But in their defense, it was only because their kids were dumb as shit. Well, today, <laughs> the courts gave us a taste of the punishment that's about to come. And unfortunately, the taste isn't very satisfying. In Boston, the first defendant of that massive college admissions cheating scandal was sentenced today. John Vandemore pled guilty to federal racketeering charges, admitting he took $610,000 in bribes to try to get privileged students admitted at Stanford through a side door. Prosecutors asked for 13 months in prison, but his defense attorneys argued for leniency, saying he used the money to pay for sailing uniforms, equipment, and staff costs. The former head coach of the Stanford University sailing team sentenced to one day behind bars, time served, two years probation, and a $10,000 fine. My actions were wrong. I see that now. But my intentions were to help the team. I will carry this with me for the rest of my life. Wow. He got sentenced to just one day? I've been stuck in the airport longer than that. <laughs> And it's funny how people only notice that they were doing a bad thing after they get caught. My actions are wrong. I see that. Get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> so when you were taking $600,000 in bribes, you didn't think that was wrong? You're just like, I'm getting a fear a weird feeling, but I want to see where this goes. Yeah. <laughs> like, do you understand how greedy it is to take bribes as a sailing coach? Being a sailing coach is already a scam, right? <laughs> you just hang out all, all day on a boat and you wear a sweater all wrong. You don't even have to work. The wind does all the work for you. <laughs> but let this be a lesson to the kids. Yeah, if you're black and caught using weed, you could spend years in jail. But if you're a coach at Stanford convicted of racketeering charges, you might have to go to prison for the rest of your night. <laughs> In other news, the tech industry has recently come under scrutiny for how all of the products that they're offering affect society at large. And today, members of Congress held a hearing to discuss a new technology that's got all of them spooked, deep fakes. Today, there's going to be hearing on deep fakes. Now, if you don't know what a deep fake is, it's artificial intelligence technology that can create realistic looking but fake videos. House Intelligence Committee is going to discuss the challenges of deep fakes and other manipulated media. Congress has gotten very worried about how easy it is to fake media and how it could impact the upcoming 2020 election. There have already been a number of prominent deep fakes spread online. And just last week, artists uploaded this deep fake video of Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg delivering an ominous message. And how did he make such a convincing fake? With free software, a regular desktop computer, and some basic programming. Okay, this is really scary. Especially with the presidential election coming up, because bad guys could use this technology to make videos of candidates saying things that they didn't say. Like, they could make a candidate say something racist. Or with Trump, they could make him say something not racist. <laughs> and this isn't just about politicians. Any of us, any of us could get deep faked. Yeah, you might even start seeing videos deep faked of me. Like, they could fake videos of me on South Africa's Dancing with the Stars, even though that never happened. <laughs> never, never, ever happened. <laughs> and personally, I'm not worried, because you see, like, I can tell which videos are real, which ones are fake. I work with videos all day, but I worry about you guys. I actually had my graphics team here make a deep fake to help teach you how to spot the difference. I think we're very alike <laughs> in many ways, and I think that's what makes it work, and I think that's why people respond to the fact that we got together. We're alike, but except I can't sing, dance, <laughs> act, and I don't look like her. Besides that, we're twins. Okay, that was weird. They just played a real video of me and my wife, J-Lo. Um, <laughs> sorry, we'll try find the fake video later. Let's move on, because uh, we've got some very sad news to report. White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders is quitting. <laughs> no, I... I said, I said she's... I said she's quitting. I said, she's quitting. <laughs> and uh, we know that this is true because she's denied it. <laughs> but this news isn't that surprising because you realize she stopped giving press conferences months ago. So it's just quitting what she already wasn't doing. She's basically quit being press secretary the same way Trump quit CrossFit. So let's move on. <laughs> because there is breaking news about a major archaeological discovery that'll blow your mind, man. And it turns out people have been getting high on pot for at least 2,500 years. 
Archaeologists in far western China say they have found the earliest direct evidence of marijuana use. It includes 10 wooden bowls containing burnt residue of pot apparently used in burial rituals. That's right. It turns out humans have been getting high since 500 B.C. So I guess now we know why they call it the Stone Age. Yeah. <laughs> If I had a band, that would have killed even harder. Uh, and it's interesting how the archaeologists discovered it. They found bowls with burnt-out weed, and they also found DVDs of the hit prehistoric movie, Dude, What's a Car? <laughs> it also must have been weird being a caveman who discovered weed, right? He was probably sitting there with an unlit blunt in his mouth looking at his friend like, man, this weed is amazing. And once we discover fire, this shit's gonna hit even harder, man.